So we're going to begin this video here by creating a new Google Sheet. So first thing I'm going to do is go to New. And I'm going to click on Google Sheets. And a brand new Google Sheet should open up. And from here you can label this, sh this sheet. Now for the, the next couple tasks I'm going to use a, a different Google Sheet that has some data already in it. Alright so let's take a look in the top left and here you see um, SAT scores. And what we're going to do with these scores with these scores is that we're going to create a uh, chart. So let's say you want to create a chart right here of the SAT scores. I'm going to highlight the names on the left with the scores on the right and this is just a math score, SAT math score. I'm going to go to insert and you're going to see a chart right here. And here you see a chart has been created for you. You can move this chart around. You can change the chart type. Okay. So that's one chart. Now let's say you want to create a chart where you have uh, a title up here. Let's name this student. And you want to include all the scores, right? You want to include um, um, SAT math, SAT verbal. You want to include everything. So now we're going to highlight everything. Go to insert. Chart again. And now we have a new chart here. It says SAT. Check it out. And and um, it says SAT math and SAT math score, SAT verbal score, just like we have both. It says student down here because now we've highlighted the the title for each uh, for each range. And it also has a cumulative score. It adds it up for you, right? Uh, this is 610 plus 520. So if you take a look, if you add these two, it comes out to right about um, 1130. And it's got 520 for the SAT verbal, which you see right here. And again, we're under Danny. And uh, 610 for the math. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the sum of um, a data set. So let's just take a look here. And let's say you want to add up all these scores. What you can do is highlight them all. Go to insert. And you're going to see something here that says function. Press sum. And right underneath it's going to say equal sum B2 plus B14. You press enter. You get 7200. So what that did is that added up all these scores. Okay, that's the sum function. And you can do it a different way too. You can press equals sum. And you can click it right here. And now you want to select your cells, right? You can just highlight those cells. And as you go down, you'll see the numbers keep adding and adding and adding. Press enter. And, and there you have it. So that's the sum function. Now let's say you want to do the average. Same thing as before. You can highlight all these scores here. Go to insert, function, average. That's going to tell you below. Average, uh, B2 to B14. Here is B2 to B14. If I just press enter, it'll give you an average score of uh, 553. So it's averaging these up. Again, you can do it the other way. You can press equals. Right here it says average. It's a little shortcut. And you can go select from B2 all the way down to B14 and you'll get the the same thing as last time. Now take a look these are SAT scores and um, they're very important right let's say you want to hold on to this for a long time but you don't want any any other um, any other person that's able to view these scores to change them because they're really important. So what you want to do is you want to protect these scores so there's a way to protect these scores so that nobody changes them and what you're going to do you're going to go up here to data Go all the way down to protected sheets and ranges. Okay. So let's add a sheet or a range. And you have to select what you want. So to do that, we're going to select a range. A sheet would be the whole thing. Right? The sheet would be the whole thing. But let's say you just want to protect a range. So you can let other things uh, uh, be edited. So if you want to protect a range, let's select where. And we'll start right here. And go all the way down. And now you see here it says B2 to C14. Select OK. And now you want to set permissions. So you can have show somebody a warning when they're about to change something. To, or you can restrict who can edit this range. So for example, it says only me. Or you can custom. Put somebody else. So now these scores are protected. Now let's say you want to format the data. That means you, you want to define the data. You're going to go... Highlight the data you want. Click Format. And you, hear, you see here it says Numbers. 
that's automatic, right? Because it's automatically gonna gonna pick for you uh, which one it is. But you might want to get more specific here. So um, right now it's formatted as a number, and when you ask uh, Google Sheets to, to do a couple of calculations and things like that, it's gonna treat this data like it's numbers, which it is. So you want to have it matching here. So um, that's fine. Now let's take a look at this one. We're gonna highlight the names. Let's go to format, number, plain text. Okay, so now let's take a look. Format, and it's selected as plain text. Now let's say you're working with um, percentages. We'll select these cells right here. We'll go to format, number, and we'll say, uh, for, instance, for instance, a percentage. So we're working on percents. So now when I put something in, it automatically becomes 31% because it's been formatted to percentages. 34, 65%, 100%. And I'm just pressing in, uh, you know, the numbers. I'm not pressing the percent here. Okay, now let's say you want to sort numbers and things like that. That means putting an order from lowest to highest. You can do that numerically or alphabetically. So let's just take a, a, a look here. Let's say I take uh, these numbers, go to data, and I'll press sort range from A to Z. Now notice they've changed from 480 at the top, 480, 490, all those. So the numbers have changed. Okay, it's now from lowest to highest. However, now these scores don't match with the student. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control Z to set them back to what they were. Now you have the scores match with the student. However, what we're going to do now is we're going to sort by sheet so that the student goes with its corresponding score. So I'm going to sort of sort by row here. So let's go to insert, excuse me, let's go to data. And this time, last time we pressed sort by range. This time we're going to press a sort by sheet. So the lowest score will be first. And do you see now how the person with the lowest score, 480, is followed is is uh is also with their score. And then 480 again is with their score, and the person with the the highest score, is uh, right down here. And even even these rows follow them wherever they were. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to to what it was like. Okay, here we are. Back to where we were, and let's say now we want to sort by whoever has um, the highest, the highest SAT math score. So let's highlight these. Who has the highest SAT math score? Jessica, right here. So let's go to data. Remember, we're sorting by sheet, so we're going from Z to A this time because we're going to start with the highest score. So here, I'm going to click this, and Jessica should be at the, at the top, right? So let's click this here. And now look, Jessica's at the top. Okay, highest score, 700. And her 630 followed her as well. Okay, the next function from the Google Certified Educator training um, that we're going to do is what's called uh, finding new unique values. Unique values. Okay, let's take a look here where it says um, field trips. So let's say you ask students, um, what are some ideas you have for, for field trips? And you just want to get an idea of, of everything that was mentioned. You don't care how many times, like zoo came up a lot of times, but you don't care how many times zoo came up. You just want to hear all the different ideas and you're going to make a suggestion. So you can select this cell, go equals, and it's going to be unique. So that means you're going to be looking for just the unique uh, answers, and you're going to select your range. So let's go down, all the way down, right? All the way down to Nature Hike. So we've selected everything. We've pressed Unique. I'm going to press Enter. And these are all the unique values here. Zoo came up once. Museum came up. Science Center, Aquarium, Police Station, Movies, Laser Tag, Nature Hike, etc. and so forth. So notice Zoo came up a bunch of times, right? One, two, three, four. But it only comes up once here because with Unique, you don't care. You're not looking for any repeats, basically. Now let's say you want to count the number of values. You want to count um, how, many, um, how many values you have here, right? So let's take a look at student grades. Well, it, it, it's not easy to, to simply count from 22 
down to 42 and, and just subtract because there, there's missing spaces. So you want to know how many how many grades do I have here, right? How many have I got completed? Well, you can use this cell and you can go equals and then count. And I'm just pressing count, not count A. Okay, just count. Count. And I'm going to go from the top all the way down to the bottom here. And you can see it's already giving me the answer, 11. But let's let go. Press Enter. And that means that there's 11. So let's count and make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? And now that was count um, and that count just by itself is used for uh, numerical. If you try it here, count, and this time we're using words, notice we have the zero here. It's not going to work. It's zero. So here you're just counting. You just want to count how many answers there are, right? But it's not working because it's reading it as, uh, as numbers. So that's why you're getting zero because there's no numbers. So what you have to do here is pretty much the same things. Equals. And instead of count, you're going to use count A. And now when you go down, take a look. 2, 3, 4. You can go all the way to here. It says 10. Let's press Enter. It gives us 10. And let's see if there are 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there's 10. Okay? Now let's go to probably the last function here. Um, determine if a response is correct. This is probably the most important one, the most difficult one you're going to do. So let's look over here. Let's say the question is, it says answers here. All right? Your question is, what's the capital? This, we'll do that later. What's the capital of Illinois? And here are some answers you have. So now you just want to find out really quickly if answers are correct or, uh, correct or wrong. And this comes in handy if you're uh, collecting responses from Google Forms. So what you can do here, and this is the most challenging one, you can press, again, equals if, parentheses. Now, you want to use the arrow key to select. So J22 equals. And if it equals, and don't forget here, I'll watch, I'm going to put a little quotation. So if it equals Springfield, make sure you spell it right. Another quotation comma again quotation now it's correct quotation comma and now it's saying okay so Springfield if if J22 is Springfield correct um, and the next comma means the next one will be false so we're gonna write wrong I'm gonna do this here and and uh, just close it up so now I'm gonna press enter let's see what it says it says correct right so, okay, that's just doing one, but let's say you want to do all of them, right? You don't have time to do it, so you want to do all of them. What you do here is you just hold down. So what you do here is you just grab this corner and sort of pull it down. And the same formula is going to work for all of them. See? So it did it for, wait, so it did it for, for every single one of them. I'm just going to go back one more time. Okay, so... If you want this formula to work for every single one of them, you're just going to grab this little piece in the corner here, drag it down, see, drag it down some more, and drag it down some more. And there you have it. And the last thing I have on this list that we have to do for this uh, Google Certified Educator training is just publish this thing. So if you want to publish it, you go to File, Publish to the Web. But for the training, you would just have to press a. Uh, you would just have to press publish. Publish. So you want to publish this? Yes. And now that it's published, you can um, you can share this link. You can do it on social media, Gmail, Twitter. You have now you're able to embed it, and much much more.